Hello people, I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new video. So, in today's video, we're going to learn 8259 PIC. You know what it is, right? Programmable Interrupt Controller. We've learned this chip already. We made a video for this with respect to 8086. Today's lecture, we're going to learn this chip with respect to 8085. Okay, uh, a lot of the working remains the same, but there are also some crucial changes which cannot be written one for the other. So you need, if you're learning 48085, this is the video you need to watch. Uh, first of all, I'll give you an introduction. 8259, as you know, is called Programmable Interrupt Controller. So what does it do? It's basically a chip used to increase the number of interrupts. Get this clear. There are several peripheral chips that you learn with the processor, whether your processor is 8085 or 8086, irrespective. There are several peripheral chips you learn 8259, 8255, 8155, 8254, 8237, and so on. None of these chips are compulsory for the processor to work. Having said that, all of these chips are very useful. So, depending upon what use you need, you connect the respective chip. You connect 8259 whenever you want to increase the number of interrupts. What interrupts are you talking about? Hardware interrupts. Yes, it is important for you to know interrupts before you learn this chip. Now, taking uh, a few, talking about a few basics first. Yeah, we're going to learn the whole architecture, but you can't jump into the architecture directly. You need to have a background. So, I'm first uh, setting the background for this chip. Look here. Very interesting. This is one chip people enjoy learning. When I take this in the classroom, I know, I mean, we see it. I've taught this chip more than 1000 times by now. When students leave the lecture, they have a big smile on their face because this chip is very entertaining in terms of the logic that it has. It is very logical. There is not one line over here that you have to mug up. Just understand the concept behind signals and you can write the answers straight away from what you understood. Okay. Now, to tell you the basics, this is 8085 mu these are its five hardware interrupts, trap, RST, 7.5, 6.5, 5.5 and INTR. Okay? Now, there is a very interesting property of INTR. Tell me, if you know interrupts of 8085, uh, 0024003C, 0034002C, what are these? These are vector addresses, also called ISR addresses. You know the basic, right? Whenever processor gets an interrupt, it suspends the program and goes to an ISR. What is an ISR? Another program. Since it's a program, it will be stored somewhere in the memory. That location will have some address. So, if an interrupt has a fixed address for its ISR, which means whenever an interrupt occurs, processor always goes to one particular location to do the ISR, such an interrupt is called a vectored interrupts. Vectored interrupts have a fixed direction, a vector, an address. When the interrupt occurs, it vectors the mu p to so and so location. Trap 7.5, 6.5 and 5.5 are vectored interrupts. These are their vector addresses, also called ISR addresses. Also, you don't have to mug them up. If you've learned my, if you've learned the interrupt topic from me or from the book, if you learned the topic properly, there is a way you can get all these addresses. Okay, I would love to explain all of it again, but then I'll be repeating the whole interrupt lecture. So I'm sure you know that. INTR, on the other hand, is non-vectored. What does that mean? When a device interrupts the MUP on INTR, MUP wants to go to the ISR, but MUP does not know the ISR address. So, what happens? The device who sends the interrupt also provides the ISR address. Are you clear about this? The I am the device, you are the MUP, I send you trap, I don't need to tell you anything. You know that you have to go to 0024. But if I send you INTR, you don't know what is the ISR address. So, I have to provide the ISR address. How? Mu P will ask the device by giving back a signal called INTA bar. You know that, right? There's something called interrupt acknowledgement. So, Mu P gives out INTA bar whenever it gets an interrupt on INTR. What does INTA bar do? INTA bar asks for the ISR address. So, for these interrupts, the ISR address is pre-decided. For INTR, it is not pre-decided. The device will provide it. Now, with this background, let's go ahead. Suppose the devices that we have connected are keyboard, mouse, printer, monitor and a CD. Again, if you know interrupts, you know these are devices which send interrupts. All IO devices send interrupts. Why do devices send interrupts? To take the attention of the mu -P. I press a key on the keyboard. The mu -P, the processor should know that a key is pressed. One option. Processor keeps checking the keyboard all the time. Is a key pressed? Is a key pressed? Is a like, come on, are we idiots? In this, you are wasting the time of the processor. This is called programmed I.O., the worst way of doing I.O. Instead, processor says, I will not check the keyboard. I will carry on with my job. I have a life. If the keyboard detects that a key is pressed, the keyboard should send me an interrupt. 
So, keyboard interrupts the processor, processor goes to the ISR, reads from the keyboard. Similarly, when you move the mouse, the mouse interrupts the processor and so on. So, all I.O. devices interrupt the processor to get attention of the processor. Okay. So, keyboard, mouse, printer, monitor and a CD drive. You know, you put a CD into the CD drive, immediately a pop-up appears. How do you want to play the CD and blah, blah, blah. So, what? That means the processor knew that a CD is inserted. One option processor keeps looking at the CD. Kabaya, kabaya, kabaya. Come on, we are not stupid. Instead, the CD drive will send an interrupt and so on. Okay. Now, all five devices interrupt the MUP on these five lines. So far, everyone is happy. What happens if there is a sixth device? Now, are there more than five devices in a computer? Of course, there is a USB drive in which you put your pen drive, USB port. So that USB port says, you took their interrupts, take mine also. I also, just like them, even I want to interrupt. So USB drive is also very ready with its interrupt. Come on, take. Does the MUP have a sixth pin? No. Should it have a six pin? No. Because how many pins are you going to create? There are so many devices. Now looking at all this, all the HDMI ports are also talking amongst themselves. See what is happening over there. Inka bhi le rahe, hamara bhi lenge. So they also want to send an interrupt. There are so many devices which want the attention of the processor. You cannot keep having interrupt pins for all the devices. So what you do is, you want to combine multiple interrupts and give it on a common line. You no longer have the liberty that on one line there will be only one device. Now you want to combine multiple interrupts. Wouldn't that be a smarter idea? Good. So, where do you combine? Out of all of them, the most powerful interrupt is trap. So, let's, you know that, right? Highest priority, edge and level triggered. You know that, right? You know the brief of interrupts. So, let's try to combine this on trap. Is it possible? No. Because trap is vectored. What does that mean? It has a fixed ISR address. That means whenever it gets an interrupt, it will always go to location 0024 to do the ISR. How can the keyboard and the USB drive have the same ISR? They are two completely different devices, different problems, different solutions. They can't have the same ISR. That means I can't combine this on keyboard, neither on, uh, that means I can't combine it on trap, nor on 7.5, 6.5, 5.5. None of these because they are vectored. Vectored means they are rigid. They can do only one ISR. Who is the flexible one over here? INTR. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to combine these two interrupts and give it as a common interrupt on INTR. But will it be as simple as I've shown? No, it can't be. Nothing is so simple. <laughs> engineering, we're learning engineering. It can't be so straightforward. It's very interesting, but of course it's intense. When USB port sends an interrupt, MUP gets an interrupt on INTR. When CD sends an interrupt, MUP still gets an interrupt on INTR. What does that mean? When MUP gets an interrupt on INTR, it will never understand who sent this interrupt. Usko samaj bhi nahi aega, akhir kiska hai. So the first thing you need is somebody in the middle who understands which interrupt has occurred and then forwards that information to the MUP. There comes the need for our chip 8259. 8259 PIC, Programmable Interrupt Controller. The idea is Devices will interrupt 8259, 8259 will interrupt the MUP. MUP still doesn't know who has interrupted, but who knows 8259? How will 8259 have a single pin to accept interrupts? No, then it will be stupid, it will be the same thing as MUP. 8259 has several pins. IR0 to IR7, that means 8 pins. IR stands for interrupt request. I am sure you figured that out. Come on. Come on. So there are eight interrupts, interrupt requests. Whenever a device interrupts 8259, 8259 interrupts the MUP. MUP still doesn't know who has sent the interrupt. So now MUP will ask whom? 8259. How? By giving a signal called INTA bar, interrupt acknowledgement. When I ask this question to students in Viva, why does MUP give INTA bar? Students say to acknowledge the interrupt. Like really you think that is an answer? You just given me the name of the interrupt. You know how those typical Viva answers are, right? Do you, do, that is not the answer. Okay? You don't give INTA bar to acknowledge the interrupt. You give INTA bar to ask for the ISR address. INTA bar is never issued when MUP gets these interrupts because MUP already knows the ISR address. Are we clear on this? So MUP gives INTA bar to obtain the ISR address. Now, 8259 through the data bus, listen to these words very carefully, through the data bus will send an opcode to the MUP, will send a what? Opcode. Why? 8259, come here, 8259 wants the MUP to do this. Look at this and tell me what instruction does this look like? If you know instructions of 8085, we have extensively covered 
all 74 instructions of ADR 5 okay so if you know the instructions of ADR 5 you know this is a call this is a procedure followed whenever mu p does call instruction suppose the isr was at location 4000 to do this mu p effectively needs to do call 4000 instruction so the job of 8259 is to somehow pass this instruction call 4000 to the mu p now as you know call is a 3 byte instruction my dear students this is a very advanced topic of ADR 5 for this first you should, you should know all the basics you know call is a 3 byte instruction I would love to explain why but again as I say I cannot keep explaining the whole of ADR 5 again and again I've done all that in the initial videos please watch them so this is a 3 byte instruction first comes the opcode then comes the lower byte then comes the higher byte following the principle lower byte lower address higher byte higher address so if this instruction was written in the memory it would have been been written as opcode 0040 that would be a 3 byte instruction that's what 8259 have to give to the mu p now that's going to be given through the data bus you know mu p's data bus as well as 8259's data bus is 8 bits that means it can transfer one byte at a time but there are three bytes over here opcode lower byte and higher byte that means there'll be three cycles required that is why mu p gives one two three 1, 2, 3, 3 INTA bars. As you know, INTA bar, bar means active low. So there'll be three low pulses, three times a low pulse, a zero pulse. So basically once, twice and thrice. Three times mu p will send zero. Those are called three INTA bar pulses. On the first INTA bar, A259 will give the opcode of call. On the second INTA bar, A259 will give the lower byte. On the third INTA bar, A259 will give the higher byte. That's how A259 will tell the mu p. Now go do call 4000. That means go and do this ISR. Please tell me, did you understand? This was absolute basics. Knowing this doesn't mean you know A259. Knowing this means you have the right to start learning A259. This is just absolute basics of A259. So if I have to say it very simply, what is the role of A259? To increase the number of interrupts. When A259 gets an interrupt, does it service the interrupt? No. Please do not write rubbish in the paper. The word servicing an interrupt means executing the ISR. When A259 gets the interrupt, it doesn't execute the ISR. It just forwards the interrupt to the mu p. Mu p asks for the ISR address. A259 gives the ISR address. How does the mu p ask? By giving INTA bar. How many INTA bars? Three. Why? Because A259 has to send three things. Opcode of call, second INTA bar, lower byte, third INTA bar, higher byte. That's it. With this, the job of 8259 is over. Now, going and doing the ISR is the job of the mu p. That is not 8259's job to hold mu p's hand and go and do the whole ISR. That is done by the mu p. 8259's job was very simple. Get the interrupt, give it to the mu p. Mu p asks for the address, give the address. That's it. Please tell me. Did you understand this? So, that was the gist of this video. Now, you know what I've been doing. Uh, this is an introduction. You want to watch the whole video, you want to learn the whole subject from me, you want to learn the subject in a nice way where you understand things and don't mug up and waste your whole uh, process of engineering just by hearting answers. You're welcome to come to my website. It's called www.bharatacharyaeducation.com. The link will be given down below. Uh, Come on the website, register yourself. There is a subscription amount. Of course, this is not free. Uh, this is professional service. Uh, there is a fee to it, but we've kept the fee very low. We kept the fee just enough to keep this whole thing afloat, to keep it viable. Anyway, so fees as of now is 9.99, but it's on the verge of an increase. So I, very soon the fees will be going higher. But anyway, come on the website, make the payment, and that's it. The moment you make the payment, instantly you can start watching the videos. There are already some 25, 26 videos on 8085. There will be many more being put up in the next few days. Uh, you can start watching the videos, you can watch the videos unlimited number of times. We have not kept a cap. So if you like some topic and you want to watch it again, even after the exam is over, just because you liked it, you want to learn more from it because uh, life doesn't end in just second year or third year engineering. There's so much more to go ahead where you keep wanting to go back to your basics for references. You can watch the videos again and again for the next six months as many times as you want. Also, if you're planning from exam point of view, in every video, right below the video, we have an option called a button called view PDF, view notes. When you click that button, a PDF opens, which is basically the section of my book covering this particular topic. So video by video by video, I've made my whole book practically free for you. Once you take the subscription for the videos, the book is as good as free. It's instead of being one big PDF where you have to keep searching for every topic all the time, along with the video, the PDF is there. So you watch the video, you understand the topic. Now understanding is something else, writing the exam answer is something else altogether. You know that. So many times you understand everything, yes, but we don't really know what to write in the exam and then searching 
investing in the prescribed textbooks is a task by itself. They are very good. I have only learned from prescribed textbooks. Uh, Gaukar, Hall, Uffenbeck, Kenneth Ayla. These are really good authors who have written good books on the subject. Now, a summary of all of them with my understanding of the subject and putting in a simple way is what my book is. So, I have given that to you for free. Watch the video, look at the PDF, prepare the answer. That is it. You are set for the exam. So, it is your one stop shop. You do not have to hunt around anywhere. Students have been requesting me to keep a crash course. No way. I am just too occupied with the current batches that I have and plus with the videos that I am making. But these videos are your crash course. They have a crash course in your pocket. You do not even have to travel on your phone or your computer. You can watch the whole subject. Anyway, Hope to see you there. Wish you all the best. Do well.